Good day, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for clicking on the video of another installment of SCORE Boston Presents. I'm your host, Rob Stutzman, and I have the privilege of volunteering with the SCORE Boston chapter as marketing and social media chair. Today, we have Jesse Colbert from the Mass PVD Fund, which seeks to increase communities' capacity to address the mental health needs of new parents in Massachusetts, and Elliot Laffer, who is Jesse's mentor and counselor from SCORE Boston. So good to have you two with us today, Jesse. And uh, please take a moment to tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization and how you got started. Sure, um, thanks so much for having me here today. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the founder and executive director of the Mass PPD Fund. And we started in about 2018. Um, our work focuses, as you said, on increasing communities capacity to address this issue of new parent mental health um, through education, training, and advocacy. Um, you know, there's just a tremendous need out there on this issue. It's something that is really stigmatized and not talked about. And we have some terrific statewide initiatives here, um, but I still think the need is really great. So um, our organization does not provide direct service, but we work to get resources into the hands um, of folks that do, who have those trusting relationships with parents. Um, and who may be in a position to bring this up, but might need a little bit of support and, and more information in, in doing that and making the connection with services. Wonderful, thank you for that. Elliot, thanks also for joining us today. Uh, please tell us a little bit about your background and how long you've been with SCORE and why you choose to volunteer with SCORE. So uh, my background is that I spent uh, 30 years in sales and sales management of engineer mechanical equipment. I spent 10 years running a City of Boston affiliated nonprofit organization and a simultaneous, uh, it's now about 45 years in leadership positions in what we believe to be the largest neighborhood association in the City of Boston, which is also a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and I joined SCORE when I retired from uh, my role as, as an executive director. I was looking for an additional um, piece in addition to the neighborhood association. One of the people that I know in the neighborhood association, her husband uh, had been um, a SCORE mentor, and he said, you might enjoy this. And it turns out that I do. It's, it's a way not only to give back, but a way to stretch and keep yourself intellectually active, and that keeps you younger. And, uh, and so I've been rolling the years backwards. I'm now 14. And uh, and it's it's been great. When I get to zero, I don't know what happens. <laughs> Thanks. So Jesse, uh, how and when did you start Mass PBD Fund? What inspired you, and uh, what are some of your services you offer? Sure. Um, so we were founded um, back in 2017, 2018, and my background includes nonprofit fundraising as well as serving as the director of the state commission. On I did served as the director of the state commission on this issue under my uh, another mentor, state rep Ellen Story from Western Mass. And I think um, with that hat on, I heard for many years about the tremendous need on this issue. Um, after I served as the director, I, I have been sitting on the commission as an appointed member. And back in 2017, I was about to go back to full-time work. Um, and also it was a difficult you know, time in our country politically, I think. Um, and I was sitting in a meeting of the state commission and there was a panel of local activists talking about their work. And the then director asked them what was their biggest um, strength and what was their biggest challenge. And to a person, they all said their biggest challenge was money. And then I just <laughs> had this aha moment um that that we've been trying to address this issue on a volunteer basis um and it's too big and it's too important um to do that way as tremendous as those efforts are sometimes they're not sustainable and oftentimes it means you know folks that look like me are the ones doing the volunteering not always um but again i think i just felt like there needs to be an investment in this issue, hence the, the name of the organization with the, the fund in there. And I think also sitting, you know, if you work at the state house as an aide, you really see every issue under the sun. 
and just felt like this was an issue that didn't have enough of a voice at the state house um, and didn't have enough voice in the philanthropic world. And I think I felt like um, I was in a position to make a difference. So, so I literally <laughs> decided to do it um, in an instant again, after hearing about the, the need for so long in, in that previous role. Wonderful. Elliot, how'd you happen to meet Jesse and, and how long have you been her mentor? So I think I've been her mentor pretty much from the start of the organization. It's pretty close. Uh, Big close, and, yep. <laughs> um, Laura Colcord, who was a SCORE uh, mentor uh, at the same time, and I sat down with Jesse and it, it, it was a really good fit. I have a lot of experience uh, working in the political world just like Jesse does. Uh, from from different sides as, as uh, volunteers and 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 otherwise, and uh, the issue is is clearly an important one, and uh, it seemed like I had some uh, good experience to share. And and since Jesse keeps coming back, either she's um, <laughs> terribly poor at judging uh, character, or I really did have something to share. And it seems to be the latter. So uh, so I think it's it's just worked out very very well. It's been interesting to see how the organization has grown and to, and to be part of helping that to happen. Excellent. So Jesse, I noticed you have quite a robust list of advisory board members and partners. What has been the key to your success in recruiting others to partner with you? Sure. Um, I think that because I worked on this issue at the State House, I was able to form connections with people who worked on the issue um, and have been able to carry that forward. Um, I, I think there are other areas where, um, you know, the skills and connections were not there when I founded the organization. And there were a number of ways that Elliot really kind of helped me fill, fill in some of those gaps. And I'm happy to share more about that. Um, I, I guess I would also say that, um, you know, because of what I mentioned about our mission, that we're really looking to help provide resources to folks that are out in the field, um, we really can't do what we're doing without partnerships. And those partnerships are so, so incredibly valuable to us. So, you know, be they community-based organizations or mental health clin clinicians, experts, um, folks across the state, um, that is really how we do our work. And so those those partnerships are really tremendous to us. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Elliot, SCORE has a number of resources that are available to both mentors and their clients. Other than your excellent background, what have been some of the resources you've been able to offer Jesse? Well, um, I think we, we've had some uh, documents we've put together that help nonprofits talk about how to put together a board and how to, um, um, you know, what are the things that you have to watch out for? Uh, some issues around uh, being a 501c3 nonprofit where you have some restrictions and we had discussions about um, how extensively uh, um, one can lobby uh, when one is when one is in that position. We had good discussions about that and, and we have information uh, that, that addresses those those kinds of issues. Great. Yeah, yes. Can I jump in just in Absolutely. terms of, oh, excuse me, um, some of the support that I think has been really valuable um, from Elliot really has, um, I would say a couple of the top ones in addition to the policy work, um, because we do, that is a big part of our mission now, but of course we um, are very thoughtful about following the rules for nonprofits, um, is was around building the board, professionalizing the board, as well as around um, strategic planning. So I think when we started out, you know, I had a really good sense of the issue. I had good connections in the, in the world and a good sense of the need out there. I think what I had not figured out and we had not figured out was what was a good way for a small organization to make a difference. And I feel like we were kind of doing projects uh, here and there, but it really wasn't um, as strategic as we could be. And I think Elliot both kind of helped guide that strategic planning process as well as guide the board to support it. So it really was a collective 
decision and also kind of a, a tested decision after trying out a few things to hone in on this, um, on our mission and on the, these three areas of education, training and advocacy, you know, as a small nonprofit, those are really good ways for us to um, kind of leverage um, the strengths that we do have and partner and make a difference. Um, so I think really, really focusing in on those things was something that Elliot helped us with. And, and it took, it took time, you know, it took time, it took testing things out, it took um, you know, developing a board and growing a board that could get behind those areas. And it's great to feel like we're a few years out and we really kind of know what our focus areas are. And if I could jump in a little on that, um, I've attended probably half or more of, of uh, Jesse's board meetings. Um, she always invites me and in, in, unless I have a good excuse, I show up. Um, and I've run a lot of board meetings. And so you know, I have a feel for what works and what doesn't. And, and I think that that's been something that I've probably brought to this as, as well, to, to try and um, focus. And, and I stay out of the policy discussion. They have all the expertise there and I have none. Um, but the, the nuts and bolts of how to get it running and, and, and how to just think together. Jesse's put together a great group and, and the board is really, really impressive. Uh, but sometimes we had to think back and say, is it is it leaning too much in one side uh, or another side of how you of how you structure a board, and uh, and and I think it's gotten better over the years. Yeah, I think so too. And you might have noticed that Elliot and and my backgrounds are just a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and he would always say, you know, his only connection was was being a dad. But I think. For us, it was really valuable to have somebody that knew the nuts and bolts that could have kind of a outsider's perspective on things and could also judge the plan and the messages that way mm -hmm. from the outside. You know, just what what are best practices? What makes sense? Um, what will resonate um, in terms of a mission, in terms of how you talk about it? So actually the fact that he was not, um, you know, working on this issue um, was, really a strength and a good way to, to test out our plans and test out our messages. And and a, a sales background, you know, Rob, you know it from, from your work. Mm -hmm. Everybody is always selling, even if they don't know that they are. And if you, <laughs> and, and if you've had to do it to, to, to earn a living, you sometimes get more sensitive to how that message gets transmitted. And I think that that, that might've helped a little bit too. Excellent. Totally. Thank yeah. you. Uh, is there any additional advice either of you would offer those who are looking to start a nonprofit? I tell them to come to school. <laughs> I think, I think I, and, and, you know, this is a great free resource. Free is, is really important, especially to people who are starting nonprofits who usually have about 45 cents in their pockets. Um, and, and, it, and it makes a difference. Uh, we have people with great experience in different areas of nonprofits and different size nonprofits. And, um, and we can help you get going. Your mission is almost always really, really important. It's always really important to you. And it's almost always really important to the world. Uh, but sometimes your background isn't in the, the, how do I watch the money side of this? A lot of nonprofit people, that's not their, that's not their focus. It's not why they go into nonprofits. And we can help them with some, of, with some of that, with some of the things you have to watch out for, things, mistakes that people have made in the past. And, uh, you know, one of the things that experienced people should bring to other people is that we've already made the mistakes that we hopefully, we hopefully can help you from uh, making the same one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that um, the practical support as Elliot outlined was just tremendously important. And I think just having somebody in your corner makes a huge difference. Um, we have used as many free services as we can. You know, th this support was tremendous. We used Goodwin Proctor, who was um, kind enough to take us on in terms of the 501c3 paperwork. Um, but again, I think, I think just having somebody in your corner that's following the progress of your organization, because getting an organization off the ground um, just takes tremendous persistence and it can be extremely discouraging. Um, we applied for grant after grant and I think, um, you know, 
trying to establish and support your mission while fundraising is really hard. I think we started out by doing some projects that maybe, you know, didn't quite square with the mission as we see it now because they were opportunities to get the organization off the ground. Um, you know, I used to joke with, with grant writing that, you know, which was my background um, before this. It's like the ninth time's a charm, you know, just, just there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of... Um, feeling like, you know, why, why did I do this in the first place? It's, it's just really hard um, to get started. It's hard to find your footing. It's hard to fundraise when people don't know who they, who you are as an organization, um, as compelling as the issue is. So I think that practical support, as Elliot mentioned, because as a founder, you know, you have some areas of, of expertise and experience and some, some areas where you don't know anything, but also just to have that support um, and somebody who's in your corner that you can check in with just made a tremendous difference and still does. Great, great stuff. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's time for rapid fire. <laughs> I will ask you a series of questions and you tell me the first thing that comes to mind. You guys ready? Sure. Yep. Okay, favorite <laughs> dessert? Ice cream. Um, I make a really good peanut butter pie. Favorite color? Blue. Red. And, and favorite president? Barack Obama. You gotta go with Barack Obama, yep. All right. <laughs> well, excellent. Thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, we certainly wish you all the success throughout the rest of 2023.